Anyway, sorry for the interruption <laughs> there, Dusk. Oh, no worries. Okay, I'm guessing um, there needs to be... So yeah, all I'm saying is it's very arbitrary. Like, Whoa, you might Jesus! Like, wow, that, that snuck up on you. Fuck <laughs> me, dude! You should have heed the advice. Uh, yeah, I kind of did. Anyways, you were saying <laughs> Dusk. Uh, just give me half a second. Hmm. What the fuck? <sighs> okay, something has to be done here. Right, so, what was that? I don't remember. Right, so you said you don't like Thunder, but other people might like Thunder. Like, yeah, yeah is it overplayed? 100%. But some people might just really like it, and that's okay. Yeah, so, what I was mentioning earlier, because I've seen a video where, um... Somebody was talking about the just oh, like the history of Lincoln Park. So when Minutes to Midnight comes out, the reception is is that Lincoln Park has sold out and gone mainstream. I'm sorry, how popular was Hyper Theory? Very popular. So wouldn't you say they're already mainstream? So again, that and and they were mainstream when we were younger. Also, like it's very arbitrary i just feel it's people being you know envious or hearing their songs over and over again in like malls or or customer and service the, just like well yeah if it's a new song it's going to be played like a thousand times yeah so i find it weird that because like i think they okay i wouldn't say faded to obscurity because i don't hear a lot of the i'm probably jumping a little too like across like i'm, I'm jumping to too many conclusions but um, the song Waiting for the End from A Thousand Sons was then played on the radio, and I'm like, that is a concept album. Like, I, I just found that weird. Again, depends what people request, depends what people like. There's a song that's really popular up here that I'm pretty sure has not been played down there at all because it's by a Canadian. Um, mm -hmm. and it's called, um, uh, break, I forgot the name, hold on. Give me half a second. Uh, it's by a guy named Talk, and it's called... Why am I not signed in here? This is stupid. Hold on. Are you ready. serious? Good uh, yeah, grief. It's... So it's called Runaway to Mars. I'm pretty sure you guys have not heard it unless I've played it for you. It would, but it would sound familiar. It It is a beautiful song. God damn it. But that it only got popular because people requested it, and it only got popular by people requesting it because it was on TikTok. Oh. Because you put it out there, and it's such a beautiful song that people wanted the world to hear it. So they requested it enough, and the radio listened. God damn it. <sighs> but he's an indie artist. Like, he doesn't have any big, like, company behind him. He's completely independent. I guess it's sort of similar to, like, how the band Ghost ended up getting so much attention in recent years. Yes. And BTS as well. I still find it hilarious that people, like, shit on Ghost because they sound so classic rock. And yet one of the most popular songs on TikTok at the moment is the song Mary on the Cross. Yes. Which is hysterical because people take it in the wrong context. Yeah, like there was a guy who literally said the song was bad was bad because it's pretty much doing this to like a Ju like a Jewish woman to which everyone went it's a song about the characters in the band's lore. And even then it's literally about two people smoking a blunt. That's literally <laughs> what the song is about. Oh, people people like to take things out of context, yeah. especially comes to songs and they're like oh it's a religious song it's like um you can take it as that if you don't want to look deeper sure yeah if, if, don't don't use it for your religious crusade yeah exactly also <laughs> funny enough the ghosts will not appreciate that <laughs> also i find it funny that the dude who did that tiktok was saying that it was just a bunch of white men who made the song and literally, the photos he used are just the vocalist of Ghost. Because, again, the thing about that makes Ghost kind of interesting is that the band is technically one guy. Uh, the vocalist, Tobias Forge, using the persona of a evil, sa evil Satan Pope. Right. Whereas all the other people are just him. And yet this guy used the same image, even though it's just the same person. 
It'd be like saying, "Oh, Gorillas is probably Gorillas is bad," and I'm gonna use these images of all five mem of all four members, even though technically it's just Damien Albarn doing music. Oh, really? Gorillas is just one person. Gorillas technically is two people. Gorillas is basically the project of Damien Albarn of the band Blur. With the creative art force of Jamie Hewlett, who did the comic series Tank Girl. See, I know very little of the backgrounds of artists. I just know when I like a song. Well, yeah, which again, it's fair because you know, even without that knowledge, you don't have, you don't need that type of narration uh, no. to, to still enjoy Gorillas because it's its own unique entity at the end of the day. Yeah. All right, do we have any more spiders up there? Hang on, I gotta take a look. Um, I am going to bounce for a little bit. Okay. Okay. See you guys later. Later, Bye. Dusk. Oh, boy. Damn it, I'm out of reach. I will have to look at that later, Dusk. Okay. Oh, speaking of, like, music discourse, um... I saw somebody was complaining about the band Death Heaven again. And all I could think was, why are we bringing this shit up when it's been almost a decade and a half? Why? <laughs> because for the context of that, the band Death Heaven, which, oh, that's where my name came from, <laughs> they released an album that made them incredibly popular. But to ask that to any metalhead, and they'll be like, oh, that was the album that made them hipsters, because it's hipster metal. So, that... that Yes, I'm not even kidding. They call it... Th these nerds call it hipster black metal because the guys look like hipsters. Gatekeeping. It's never it's very go away. stupid. Yeah. Also, I feel like the only reason they complain about Sunbather, which is what the album's called, is just because the album cover is pink. <laughs> they have small wieners. <laughs> it's so stupid! Stupid, and they're like, "This is not good because it has blast beats and it's the vocals are screechy." Something oh, tells me, like if, something tells me like, they would really not like him. I'm pretty much sure they wouldn't like him. They probably would be like, "Him is not metal; they're just gothic rock." Which, again, fine, but okay, whatever. They just call whatever. it metal. Like, oh, okay, that's his thing. Yeah, or the band's thing. Yeah. How do you pronounce his name? Villavallo? Um, I re if I remember correctly, it's Villavallo. Villavallo. Okay. No, I just, I, I don't want to accidentally butcher his name. I just have a lot of respect for the dude. No, I like Villavallo. I may not be a big fan of him, but the songs that I did hear from, um, from his, from a little bit of, um, him, it's pretty damn good. Oh, yeah. No, um, I rem I was kind of introduced to the band from, uh, the song... Well, it was from Project Revolution 2007, uh, but, uh, like, somebody who I w uh, was friends with at the time, we, we just kind of just disappeared over time. Fell out. It happens. Anyway, he showed me the song uh, Wings of a Butterfly, and I was like, dude, this song slaps. Yeah, Wings of a Butterfly is pretty damn Come good. Come on and show. Rip off the wings of a butterfly on your soul. I'm personally a big fan of uh, pretending, which, funny enough, it's in the movie. Oh shit! <laughs> which um, is was used in the movie that featured um, some of the people from Jackass. It was um, it's a movie called Haggard, and it started Ryan Dunn, you know, rest in peace, Ryan Dunn, mm -hmm. as the main character who's going through a breakup. And when he's when the when the movie shows him sulking around, they play the song "Pretending" by him, and it's such a fitting song, especially for a movie that's technically a silly comedy. Aww. Actually, I think I read that. Yeah. Uh, Link, get the fuck back up there. Jesus. <laughs> oh, deck or Def, I got the. Uh, I'm, I think yep. I'm at the final boss. I'm about to face Wiley. So oh, gonna... you're about to face Wiley, aka the Life of Iris. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna save and do that later. Yeah. Okay. Can't wait to start Mega Man 2, honestly. <laughs> I mean, it's considered, it. like, 
an right. improvement from the first one. It kind of established the things that made the franchise good after that. So it was the first one I played in the series for uh, Battle Network was two. Mm. <laughs> mm, that too. Also, this is the album art that really pissed off um, those nerds. It's Pink the Horror! You know, a lot of people seem to forget that pink used to be a male color like a century ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like conserved by like the uh, rich and famous to be using pink and shit, and then arbitrarily it started being used for women. Hold on, hold yeah. on, Riley. So apparently people are complaining about this uh, art cover that's from a metal band, and they're complaining that it's pink. Which is like, oh, you know, that used to man. be a male. Yeah, it used to be a male color like a century ago. That's just an it was unisex. Deep seated insecurity with their own masculinity that they can't embrace the color pink. Damn. Thank you. <laughs> yep, that's true. In layman's terms, stay mad. Yeah. That does. It's like there's a. That does remind me, how many of you guys saw the video where uh, Mr. Beast helped a uh, thousand people uh, here? I uh, haven't just... seen it yet, but I know for a fact that I'm just imagining a bunch of people going, This is an that. example of Mr. Beast being evil. Like, wow, you guys really must think that, like, there's I'm, no good in the world. I'm placing on my bets. Somebody on Twitter is going to bitch about it. Probably. Yeah, do. Like, literally, these it's people Twitter. complain. It's I mean, Twitter. these people. Yes. These people literally whine and moan about how they want rich people to do something with their money. Did I just enter the have... sewers? Huh? Uh, the game. Oh. You, you see a bunch of people on Twitter always complain that they want rich people to do something with their money. And then you finally have someone like Mr. Beast doing exactly that. Oh, that's just a they... PR move. It's like... It's like so what would... it is. I mean, what like, what even... kind of... Even if it is a PR move, it's, it's like for a good cause. Like even then, like even if you if someone were to be like, it's a PR move, what like it's a benefit for both of them. He's getting money and good views, and people are getting you know they're getting the help and money. Like they're given a briefcase of cash. That too. So like, and even if it's like, oh, it's not a lot of money, it's still like decent amount for them to still do shit i'm sorry what was in that briefcase ten thousand dollars each ten thousand uh, dollars yeah yeah okay so you could make the argument that maybe it's a mr beast that's chump change but compared to helping a thousand people get their like get a good hearing aid along with ten th do you honestly think that all these people would look a gift horse in the mouth like Mm -hmm. I had a friend talking about that in another Discord, and she was like, the only argument that could be made is if, like, he's saying that he's curing them, their deafness, but at the same time, people can get, like, offended by the word cured because it's not technically curing them. I saw or, that argument what? before, but I'm sorry. But that is just there to exaggerate and get the viewer's attention of spreading the good cause. Yes, you can make the argument that it's a white lie, but... We're kind of to blame for what gets our attention. Because I mean, YouTube, a lot of that stuff is is at times clickbait, and clickbait's unfortunately become a big prevalent thing in YouTube. Go ahead, Riza. I mean, it's, and, it's, and it's like also be, another big thing is just like um, people being as, people asked her about uh, the Medicare system, and people are saying there's a jab to that too, which is well, probably that's true. Not even Mr. But... Beast's fault. Any, yeah, that's a whole other issue. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that is beyond his control. He just wants to help people. Like, honestly, like the dude has made so much fucking money. He's like, he's probably bored. Like, I don't know what the fuck else to do. Maybe I could just help other people. This like, man literally read an entire dictionary and counted to a million. <laughs> he literally is giving his. He get. He's what, literally what basically. Hell? He's literally basically giving his money away. I mean, he used to jokingly call himself like an uh, atm machine because of how many times he would go on twitter and be like if you do x and y i'll i'll send you money did your game break yeah apparently oh uh -oh. no did it save uh, okay i at least have the hook shop and i gotta like <sighs> well that's fantastic isn't it uh, uh... i gotta navigate through the lost woods again damn it Stay, stay, sir, your friend. Well, I mean, I've already saved my progress. It's just 
God damn it. <laughs> Fuck off. It just, it just errors. Stopping emulation. What the hell? How much progress did we lose? I'll probably just like have to like backtrack on the fucking uh, dungeon itself. That was weird. I don't think we lost that much progress. I highly doubt it. Nah, hopefully. Because I made sure that I saved. I don't know. I didn't keep track of winning last save, so I don't really know how much I, you I'm, lost. I'm pretty sure I saved. I probably lost that one key after finding it. I'm probably going to have to like find that again. Shut up, Navi. I know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have to deal with these guys again. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, someone made someone made a what if scenario in regards to uh the FNAF movie. <laughs> Yeah, I heard Matt. rumors about that. Like, how are they going to make that work? I mean, I mean there's a, they have a lot to work with, realistically. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things that I've noticed about, like, what, <clears throat> what people seem to be saying about the FNAF movie is the fact that it's going to be more of a, um, I guess, a tr like, just taking, just doing their own spin on it. But still doing it, still having it be as faithful to the source material of FNAF, which... I'm I mean, when okay. you think about it, FNAF, like, when you play the games, there's no direct storyline. You just have to keep your ass alive until it's 6 in the morning. Exactly. Well, I mean, there is a story, but it's stuff you have to look out for. Well, but, so what realistically... What are they going for? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, like, we know for a fact that Scott had been, you know, approved, like, going through different scripts to seeing which one he liked the most. And from what... You know, whatever from what little source that we did get for the FNAF movie, um, it seems it's just going to follow the events of the first one. But I think they're going to be making a lot of references to the events that happened, such as the missing kid, um, a uh, William Afton, um, the bite of eighty-seven, the bite of eighty-seven, or as or as Markiplier says it, the bite of eighty-seven. Because we know for a fact Michael uh, William Afton is going to be making an appearance because he's played by fucking Shaggy by uh, from Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. Like Which, joints. like I still, I still kind of approve that the fact Matthew Leonard is going to be playing the villain. Which, I mean, if you know Scream, that shouldn't be a surprise, but that's still kind of amusing. But my it's question, actually... is, but my question is like, are they going to go off the games? Or the books, because that's Probably my the games, because not a lot of people are familiar with the books, unless you're, like, a really big hardcore FNAF but, fan. But, like, I know that the books gave more story with, like, the certain characters. <sighs> well, well, see, here's the thing about the books. Similar to the MLP comics, they follow their own different continuity. Yeah, but the only difference is they proved that the books are actually canon to the games. Which... Even then, I don't kind of agree with that. I feel like that's just sort of something that Scott said out of whim. Because, for what I've read, the co the books and the games have way too many different continuity errors. The only thing I agree with with the books is which child became the puppet. I or still not. firmly believe that the puppet was the daughter of Cassette Man from the fifth game. Who was the assistant? To, who was the guy who worked with William Afton? That has always been my head canon, and that's pretty much it. And now we have the thing that now we have the thing where like uh, people were like even Matt Pat thinks this that um, that there are two mm. children spirits in Golden Freddy. Wouldn't surprise me. Also, what were you gonna say, Golden? Uh... Uh, I think you uh, so, uh, you mentioned something about the MLP comics. I'm like, I'm glad that you're like acknowledging it like that. That's 
That's just a whole different conflict of interest. Shut up, Navi. No, 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 not there. Not I there. like the comics. I know that there's some people out there <laughs> who really don't have, like, don't really like the comics, but I feel like the comics at the end of the day have their own different continuity vibe, and I think that doesn't really affect the, the um, the way that the show presented things. Yeah, and, kind of on, and you, honestly, I prefer it stay that way, because when somebody tells me, like, oh, but comms explain this, and that's, like, why can't the show do that then? Like, are you are you kidding me? I mean, and not to mention, another thing that I kind of like about the comics is that they kind of get away with more material than the show did. Yeah.